We'd been living in Castle Valley for about a week when I called up Herb, one of the owners and guides from Desert Highlights in Moab, Utah, to see what he thought about me climbing Castleton Tower. Our canyoneering guide, Kai, had planted the seed in my mind when we rappelled through Pool Arch Canyon. I didn't previously think I could do it, but the more I learned about this tower's epic history, the more I wanted to try. As an example, Alex Honnold free soloed it some years back. I think people are just afraid of the unknown. They don't want to feel so small. They don't want to feel insignificant. It's all just basic human desire to be a part of anything greater than yourself. Steph Davis base jumped it. The car company Chevrolet even did a commercial here in 1964, helicoptering an Impala and a model to the top. No other automobile offers so much of what so many people desire. To climb Castleton, I had to pass Herb's test. We went to Wall Street, which is slightly west of Moab, down Potash Road. Here I learned the basics of how to crack climb outside. Herb put me through his Castleton simulator, which includes four routes. A warm-up on Grandma and the Green Suede Shoes, a 5'7". Lacto-mangulation, 5'10B. Top 40, an old-school 5'8", with a lot of laybacking on the finger crack running up the corner. Wow. All right. Bing, bing, bing. And Flakes of Wrath, the East of Wrath variation at 5'9 plus. I definitely didn't feel like I was crushing it, being completely pumped and sore at the end. I wasn't totally certain what Herb needed to see, but he told me I'd passed, and he'd see me the next morning at Castleton. I'm going to grab this hex. To beat the traffic, Herb and I met up in the parking lot at 6.30 a.m. and began our hike up the 1,500 feet of vert wow. to get to Castleton. Periot Mesa, there's some great climbing down there. And then there's a 12B called Sacred Ground out there too. There's some crazy rock climbing up there. Wow. Once you're on the plateau between the rectory and the tower, you still have to scramble your way up to the base. After a little awkward bouldering, Herb pointed out some dinosaur tracks and we ambled over to the start of the North Chimney route. Yeah, jeez. Ah, oh, it's warming up nicely. Yeah, sorry, so like, I'll basically, I'll belay you up, then I go up, I clove hitch in. I'm gonna remain tied in. Correct. All the time, like the whole time I'll be on you won't untie your knot until we get right. to the summit. Great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That makes sense. Um, yeah. So the first like few moves are the crux. Yeah. This getting past the roof, up to and past it, I feel like is the business. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was just kidding when I said it's slick. Yep. 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 <laughs> On the first pitch, I fell after about three moves and already felt super pumped, and I hadn't even gotten past the roof. Yeah, 
Definitely feel like some water after that. Yeah, you're in a sip. <laughs> Yep, always in awe of this place. Never gets old. Yeah. The second pitch contained the spicy off width section. I found I could make upward progress by relying on tiny toe ledges and smearing my hand on anything I could find off to the left. <laughs> Almost to the stands. The third pitch seemed to be the actual oh. chimney section. It got a lot easier here with ample opportunity for stemming and great holds. You arrive at the final anchor point, which is a nice flattish pile of rocks wedged in a giant crack. The fourth pitch is where you meet up with the top of the Core Ingalls route, first put up by Leighton Core and Huntley Ingalls in 1961, and which is the first route to access the summit. The last pitch is a sweet relief, a nice 5'7 with a big handrail and decent feet. It's also the shortest pitch at something around 60 feet. Oh. So sick of these whole arm cramps. <laughs> yeah. Lots of view. A few more moves and we mantled up onto the summit. It's bigger than I imagined, with enough room that climbers built a wind-protected bivy site. I was also pleased to find four bars of LTE for a quick FaceTime call to my wife. After we'd had our fill of pictures and the stellar views, we began our rappel down the core angles which has chain anchors all the way to the bottom. Funnily enough, this was the only part of the day when the exposure really got to me. You have to trust your gear completely. Oh my God, we did it. On the dirt. Yeah. <sighs> Although I don't fully relax till the ropes are down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true that. When I got to the ground, relief and a massive sense of accomplishment settled over me. Castleton Tower was probably the hardest physical endeavor of my life to date. Every limb on my body was cramping, and I was so acutely exhausted at the finish it was hard to keep my eyes open on the descent. Huge thanks to Herb for getting me up and down Castleton safely and the team at Desert Highlights for being awesome guides during our time down in Moab. I'm definitely planning to climb with them again when I go for another big objective in southern Utah. <laughs>